of YouTube. Welcome back to episode 30 of the Tim Tebow Dynasty. Unfortunately, our 42-13 to victory over the Ravens somehow got deleted, so I can't show you that game, so I'll just quick go over the stats. I put up a total of 400 yards, 5 touchdowns, and a fumble. Rookie Zach Meow caught another 5 passes. Now with 5 games left on the season, Zach Mia only needs 34 catches to break Anquan Bolden's rookie single season reception record. Unfortunately, he got hurt against the Ravens and will be missing the Browns game. Coming into the matchup, this Jaguars offense is number one in total offense, second in pass offense, fourth for rush offense. He scored 35.6 points per game, and we've given him the second most sacks this season. On the other hand, the Browns' defense is the 12th best in the league, 21st against the pass, 12th against the rush. They give up 22.6 points per game, and they are the third worst team in terms of total sacks. A couple of Browns defenders that I'm going to need to look out for is strong safety TJ Ward, who's an 88, corners Joe Hayden, who's a 95, and Terrell Brown, who's also an 88. The Browns in the 2013 draft took number 6 overall right outside linebacker Bark Evius Mingo, who's now an 89 in Madden. Mingo ended up playing three seasons with the Browns, only ended up with 12 and a half sacks in his eight year NFL career. He's still playing, so he could play longer, but generally he's considered a bust. Similar to how Madden was able to make Deion Jordan into a star defensive player, Mingo wasn't really a star. I don't get how they develop players like this because now all of a sudden he's one of the best defenders on, their, on the Browns defense in his second season. So, just one of my complaints. Mingo must have heard me talking about him because he comes with a big sack for a 10 yard loss. I like to talk poorly about A. Sanders, even though for his rookie season, he caught 33 passes for us. So far this year in year two, He's caught 19, so he's having a similar season, but I just don't really get him involved because of how many drops he has. And unfortunately, since the game was deleted and I couldn't show you the Ravens game, you missed out on his 5-catch, 92-yard performance, which was probably his best game of the season. I had previously mentioned that both Cam Newton and Colin Kaepernick were signed to new seven year deals, being $130 million and $123 million for the seven years. Well, before this game, the Jaguars offered me a contract extension, a five year, $50 million contract. I, the reigning MVP, and soon to be again MVP of the season, declined that contract. It's insulting, $10 million per year compared to what they received. And if you're saying to yourself, how do you know that Tebow's going to be the MVP again? Well, let me just put it this way. Out of the 12 possible AFC Offensive Player of the Weeks, Tebow's won 9 before this game. So, we're having a pretty good season with Tebow. Still putting up a lot of turnovers, but we're topping the MVP voting right now. That catch gives them a first down. Also, last episode, I mentioned that somebody wanted me to go and join the New Orleans Saints if I do leave the Jaguars. And I did look into who their starting quarterback is right now. They do have Chad Henney, who's a 77 overall, 
and they took a quarterback in the third round who's also a 77. So instantly I'd be a starter and an upgrade over both of them. The Browns lined up in the nickel. The Jaguars get a first down. And honestly, I do really like this Jaguars offense that I'm on. I like our receivers a lot. If the Jaguars would have just offered me a five-year, $75 million contract, which would only be $15 million a year, pretty similar to what uh, Kim Newton signed, then I would have accepted it. It would just been two years less, so I could have got another contract. Fine by me. And without rookie Zach Mee out of this game, Griff Wallen has stepped it up pretty nicely. In the first quarter, he has like about seven catches, so... He's a pretty nice replacement for him for this one game. Offense lines up here. And the second quarter is underway with this snap. Going to lose yards here. That time I gotta blame the running back. Mingo makes a nice tackle there and shuts Maurice Jones Drew down for another bad run. Jones Drew is having a good game sometimes. Then majority of the season he's been having bad games. So It'd be nice if they replaced him, preferably with Denard Robinson as our running back. But we'll see what we do going forward. On that last play, our left tackle, Eugene Monroe, who is on the franchise tag right now, didn't even block at all. The corner came clear off the blitz and hit me. I had no time to throw. So it'd be nice if our offensive line would improve because I'd be putting up 5,000 passing yards and probably another 1,000 rushing yards. But right now, I'm pretty just frustrated with him. Takes lined up now as a slot receiver. He fires it in there tight. This bronze defense keeps calling the blitz, leaving our guys wide open. They'll take the snap from inside the red zone. A week ago, they had a lot of success inside the 20. I've already attempted 17 throws in the first quarter and a half. Looks like I'm going to be throwing it a lot this game. Hopefully we don't throw any receptions. That's a Sanders second touchdown of the season, doubling his total from last year. So now for his career, he has three touchdowns. Pretty solid start for a young career. Just kidding, that's garbage. I don't like him. Right there, I'm just trying to get rid of the ball instead of taking another sack. And I toss it up to Justin Blackman, who I was hoping would make a catch, but I wasn't expecting much. And Bark Evius Mingo comes up with his second sack of the game. Jim, when you get in these situations, there's not much you can do. Third and long, not easy to pick up first downs in these type of situations. And converts on the Well, the defense is going to... So our defense has been playing pretty well this game. We get, we've been getting good field position all game. We're starting off on their 45 with just under two minutes left. And looks like we're going to try scoring again before halftime. Jones Drews, a running back normally, but this time lined up as a receiver in the slot. Escaping the pressure, able to make the tackle about two yards shy of the first. Jones Drews, the receiver, sent out wide to the left. So far, I'm not having the same rushing numbers that I had last year because I'm trying to be more of a pocket passer, which could be why I'm throwing more turnovers. But I think we've actually improved pretty well as a pocket quarterback compared to how awful we were at interceptions last year. So if we need to cut back more on the running, I could do that. The quarterback you see on the screen for the Browns is Chuck McAdoo. He was a fifth overall pick in the 2014 fictional NFL Draft in my Madden series. He's not very good. He's about a 75 overall, 
in like third string on their depth chart, but due to injuries, he's now starting for them, and he sucks. <laughs> And that's halftime. So quick word from our non-sponsor. Apparently, Kellogg's heard about how much we love eating crayons, and they decided to make a crayon cereal. I haven't tried it for myself, so if you've tried it, let me know how it holds up compared to the actual crayon taste. Again, Crayons and Kellogg's is not a sponsor. And we're back in the second half with a 24-0 lead over the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are doing what they always do, suck ass, and miss the playoffs. Because with the loss here, they're basically eliminated from the playoffs, which I'm pretty happy to do. I can't stand them. Their fan base is annoying. If you're a Browns fan, I'll be shut up. Your team's not very good. And I'm not talking about the Browns being bad since in Madden. I'm talking about real life. Since they've returned to the NFL in 1999, they've had 22 seasons so far. And over those 22 seasons, they've had three winning seasons. They're garbage. Another example of how bad this Browns defense is. They're supposedly the 12th best defense in the league. And I just picked up a 4th and 10. Which is rare. But... Screw them. Long gain sets them up here on this play. Knocked away incomplete. Good job by the corner that time. Knocking the football down on the throw down the field by the quarterback. That will go down as a pass defense by him. Good job. This bronze team is supposed to be a 12, top 12 defense. Do you see the numbers I'm putting up? You can't tell me that I'm not worth more to this t- Jaguars team than Cam or Colin Kaepernick were to the 49ers and Panthers. This is why I'm in test free agency. And that makes 31 unanswered points by this Browns defense. Their offense is crap. They wasted the fifth overall pick on a quarterback who's not very good. And after my trash talk, I threw an interception. Bad play by me. Quarterback coming to the line. Hoping to avoid being sacked for a sixth time in this game. And now because of that interception, they scored a touchdown and I have to call five straight run plays with my running back. So hopefully Maurice Jones Rue could do something because he's been being shut down all day besides his huge reception for a touchdown. But on the ground, rushing, he's been shut down. So let's see if he could do anything with his five carries. Those first two carries, Jones Drew opened it up for a nice big gain. First of five and then like of 12. So I guess trash talk worked on him. I don't know. Takes in the slot. Second and 12. Maurice Jones Drew. Left side. Balls out. Someone's been injured out. All right, so Maurice Jones Drew fumbled the ball. Our offense is, for some reason, falling apart. And when he fumbled, Maurice Jones Drew got hurt. He is going to be out for the next seven weeks after this. So he's basically done for the season. And could probably only come back if we make it a Super Bowl. Also, our big 31-point lead has now fallen to 16 points. So, basically two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. And they would tie it up. So, I'm going to have to manage the second half better. The only positive news that I could take away from Reese Jones' injury is that... Because he's off the field for the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to get Denard Robinson some more carries and receptions to finish the season. Hopefully, he has a better, like, last, like, four ish games and we can pad his stats a little bit so he develops. 
when you throw against zones, that's what he did, and he got the nice completion. First and 10, Robinson's taking the handoff. And that's a tackle by Nandi Asamoah. How many of you remember Denard Robinson playing at the University of Michigan and thought he would have a bigger NFL career? Go down to the comment section, tell me if you remember him or who your favorite uh, college football player was that didn't really make it into the NFL or did but had a lackluster career. I would like to know that. And the Browns defense shows how undisciplined they are. The defense, a little jumpy right there. One college star I always thought was going to be the next big thing in the NFL was Brady Quinn from the University of Notre Dame. I thought he was going to be the next great franchise quarterback. Unfortunately, he got drafted by the Browns, who are a shit organization, and they ruined his career. Then when he went to Denver, he never got a shot. So, who do you think should have had a great NFL career but turned out to be a bust? It's a dime look for the defense on this play. Reaches out and snatches it. He's going to be tackled right around the 24-yard line. And that was a fourth straight play. We went to Denard Robinson. Two on the ground, two in the air. Nice to get him some touches here and there. He's going to be tackled right around the 24-yard line. Lewis is moved from the tight end position to the slot. Looking to the right side and throwing. Here comes the training staff as we've got a Maybe I overworked him with six straight plays to Denard Robinson because he's now hurt. Hopefully he's able to come back in this game because that will only leave us one running back on our roster healthy, which would be Justin Forsett. We have a fullback, but he sucks, so I don't really use him very much. He's done a terrific job so far here today. He's got his team winning. They're in the red zone. Let's see how clever he's going to be on this call. Well, it's a beautiful drive down the field. I mentioned it before, but the Browns wasted the fifth overall pick on a garbage ass quarterback, so now we get the ball back about 30 seconds later. It's pretty obvious that I'm not running as much as I normally do. Do you think I should start running more? Maybe that will help uh, keep defenses like off balance and not expecting what we're going to do. Or do you think I should keep doing the pocket passer thing with Tebow? That sack wasn't on the offensive line. That one's on me. I held the ball too long, waiting for Golden Tate to get open over the middle. That was my fault. In the end, it picks up only a yard. Hard sometimes as an offensive coordinator to call plays to catch. No, typically I would try scoring one more time just to run up the score. But with the injuries that we've had this game, I want to just get out of it. We have a nice 19-point lead. I'm not trying to get anybody else hurt. Just going to run down this clock. Third down. They didn't fare too well in these situations last week. Looking down the field. And they sack the quarterback. And that's a quick series of three and out. Snickers is the proud over now. And their offense heads on to the field. Tate's lined up in the slot. And a flag down. They've got him again. Offside defense. Players from both sides making an appeal, but the officials. And with that penalty, it's the end of the game. A nice 34 15 win over the Cleveland Browns. After the win on that sideline. And guess what? We just won our. Tenth of 13 weeks, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. So out of 13 weeks possible, I won 10. So MVP right there.
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and come back for episode 31, where we take on the division rivals, Tennessee Titans, again. It's been a game we'll always remember. Jim Nance, Bill Sims, so glad to bring it to you.